What's up guys, uh, welcome back. Um, I haven't made a video in a while now on the SC project. I uh, figured I'd give you guys an update. Uh, before we get started, I want to give you uh, a little update on this car. I've had some requests. Uh, this is my personal car. It's the 89 Toyota Supra with the 2JZ GT swap, uh, Borg Warner S366 Turbo. Just got finally tuned a couple of weeks ago and ended up making 703 to the wheels. Um, and very happy with the numbers. My goal was 700 and I was able to get that 703. Uh, I won't be driving this car at full boost. Um, you know, obviously turned up all the way. My rear end started to give out. Um, have some issues with the subframe bushings and uh, alignment issues right now after the tune. Um, I guess too much power. Uh, but stock motor unopened uh obviously seals were done uh, by me um turbo sc300 borg Warner with the ebay cast manifold with the pte 46 millimeter uh, wastegate recirculated don't like that opened uh dumb tube uh obviously stock manifold with a thousand cc uh cc pte injectors um with the uh, dash eight feet from the fuel tank all the way to the rail and obviously return is dash six um currently running on helicad robber one pump i'm probably going to be running two pumps this winter depending on how i want to go about that but other than that i have a stock uh radiator uh clutch fan set up from factory stock igniter which will be eliminating we've been having some issues with that and full boost it's breaking up so we'll be directly wired getting it wired into the emu black uh, and getting the whole harness redone. Obviously, the fuel lines all going to be re uh, redone this winter. Just to clean it up. And obviously, I want to get the. I spray painted the valve covers. I want to get them actually professionally power coated. And obviously, this one's professionally power coated and make it shiny. Uh, I do have something in plan for the intake. Um, intercooler piping, obviously, going to get recirculated uh, based off the manifold. And I, and I am rubbing down here with the passenger wheel uh, when I turn all the way to the left um, so this is gonna the piping needs to be adjusted or probably gonna be rerouted this winter based off that part uh, I do have a CX racing three inch intercooler down here which obviously made up to 700 horsepower I don't know what's the limit on that uh, but I am currently going to keep that no changes on that um, but yeah this is my 700 horse power toy that i drive on the weekends um it's powered by emu black with the bti gauge uh, i'll put the link to the description to or maybe at the end of the video to my bti gauge uh from top performers if you have an mk3 and running a bti gauge i mean uh emu uh this is the best to uh half uh the bti gauge uh reads pretty much everything so you don't have to you know cluster the um cluster your dash with like millions of gauges this gauge reads pretty much everything uh reach out to sound performance uh there is the one who made this um uh, gauge for uh for emo black and for the mk3 owners it's nicely flushed in so and pretty much reads everything you want uh so i'll put a link to the description and also a link to at the end of the video uh on this dash um so you get an idea like what what it does and how it looks and everything but this is my interior of the car um nothing special besides you know burgundy leather um but let's continue on the sc uh here's the update uh the last video that i posted was we're working on the the valve stems uh there were were three valve stems that are bad but i re replaced all of them uh intake and exhaust uh completely with oem uh they're all installed cams are installed uh valve lash uh checked and are within factory uh clearance um we got the motor back in uh into the car i installed it last week um just wanted to get this done uh wanted to record everything how, what i did from you know obviously from the valve stems up until now but i'm running out of time i am going to be busy uh soon so i'm trying to get this done as much as possible and soon and um and get it running so i just want to be able to hear it and make sure there's no leaks anywhere so that's why i haven't been recording um the progress uh i know i am not 
uh, showing you guys the progress, you know, step by step and what I've been doing. But I uh, just wanted to take my some time and show you guys what I've what's been done um, and what I need, uh, the parts I need left uh, for this car to be finished. So uh, obviously the trans is installed with the motor. Uh, the clutch is not fully installed to the flywheel, so I'll be getting that done hopefully sometime soon. Um, as you notice, we do got new studs for the manifold. We had some issues with the factory studs, um, which I don't understand when whoever installed this manifold originally should have caught this. But there are, were three bolts down here. Uh, I'm sorry, two studs down here, which was hitting the, the runner. Or both the runners and the bolt was sitting tilt and it was sitting on the weld too. So what I what we plan on what we did was replace all the studs out completely, get short studs and uh, bolts um, the nuts for it. So everything is nicely uh, fitting and there's no issues where you know the bolt is, was tilting instead of being straight it was tilting in a weird way because obviously because the stud was hitting the runner and it was sitting flush so. Yeah, so we replaced all the studs with uh, um, PHR, uh, I believe. Um, Real Street provided these bolts. They're about $75 for pretty much all of it, uh, for 12 studs. And obviously nuts. So manifold's completely installed. Um, right now, my goal is to get the turbo installed, clock, intercooler piping obviously installed and everything. The air radiator installed, intercooler installed, the piping installed. Uh, for the intake side, I am planning to first get the fuel lines installed. Obviously, we're going to be running the stock fuel lines. So I do need to get underneath the car, figure out how to run these lines and what we're planning on doing. Obviously, the car um, is going to get a new Volvo prompt. I believe he's going to be running E85. And from what I've been told, the uh, factory lines are dash six. So I don't know what his power goals are, So, but I've been told that we are going to be running stock lines. So I need to get underneath there, figure out exactly how to run these lines. And then once I figure that out and start riding those fuel lines, get the lower intake uh, runner installed with the fuel rail and get the lines installed to the fuel lines, obviously. And then the intake, I have to obviously paint it wrinkle black. I did get the lower intake painted wrinkle black and as well as this. Uh, not the greatest, but it works. Uh, kind of flushes in with the uh, valve covers. These were professionally power coated wrinkle black. Uh, so we will be painting the, uh, I already have the lower intake uh, runner painted wrinkle black. I am going to paint the intake manifold wrinkle black when the weather gets a little warmer. Right now it's currently 63 outside. Um, Chicago weather has a tendency to be uh, changing often. So would like to get this done as soon as possible. Not much left to do. Obviously, I got to run the coolant lines, which is back there. I got to figure out what lines are needed to get that, you know, get that factory look and make sure that everything is nicely installed and nothing's touching the downpipe when I get the downpipe installed. Obviously, you know, downpipes are going to get hot. So and right now it's not wrapped or coated. So I don't want these lines to be touching in and obviously melting and then we have a coolant leak or some kind of serious issue. So uh just wanted to give you guys this full update. Uh I will be recording hopefully uh starting soon on you know the build itself, just you know um step by steps on what I'm doing and then um go from there. So stay tuned guys. Uh again sorry for the late video. Um enjoy. Uh, I will be posting more videos soon. And obviously, I will be posting more videos on my car as well. Uh, we will be rebuilding the rear end this winter. So stay tuned for that. And then we'll go from there. Obviously, this car is going to be getting brakes, rear end, uh, new bushings. Obviously, getting, uh, getting the diff rebuilt as well. I do have the kit already. I do have to order bearings from Toyota for it. Uh, I don't know... What else I have planned for this car, but stay tuned for this build in the winter time in, in the upcoming months. But in the meantime, we're going to get this done. So thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know.